guys welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another faith friday video if you're new around here my name is ashton and i make faith videos here on youtube in today's video we're back for part four of our ephesians bible study so if you're interested in seeing that then keep on watching first time watching a bible study with me then i will quickly let you guys know how this goes so i start by reading the whole chapter and then i go verse by verse and share with you any revelations that the lord shared with me during my time um studying this chapter so like i said in the intro today we are studying ephesians chapter four um if you've missed the last three bible studies then go ahead and watch those first i'll make sure to put those in the cards and in the description box below also if you prefer to read um, these Bible studies or want these notes for yourself to reflect over later, then you can look at them on my blog and the links for that will also be in the description box. So I think that is all that I wanted to share with you guys. So let's get right into today's Bible study. So Ephesians chapter four starts and it says, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, exhort you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another in love, be eager to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. And saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also he who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. He gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service, and for the building up of the body of Christ, until we all come into the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, into a complete man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So we may no longer be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men, by craftiness with deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we may grow up in all things unto him who was the head, Christ himself, from whom the whole body is joined together and connected by every joint and ligament as every part effectively does its work and grows, building itself up in love. Therefore, this I say in testifying the Lord, that from now on you walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their minds, having their understanding darkened, excluded from the life of God through the ignorance that is within them due to the hardness of their hearts. Being callous, they have given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. But you did not learn about Christ in this manner. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off the former way of life in the old nature, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new nature, which was created according to God in righteousness and true holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let every man speak truthfully with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Do not give place to the devil. Let him who steals, steal no more. Instead, let him labor, working with his hands things which are good, that he may have something to share with him who is in need. Let no unwholesome word proceed out of your mouth, but only that which is good for building up, that it may give grace to the listeners. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God in whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, outbursts, and blasphemies with all malice be taken away from you. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ also forgave you. Amen. Amen. 
So let's go ahead and look at this verse by verse. So verse number one says, I, so we know the person that is writing this is Paul. So he says, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, exhort you, um, exhort is like to encourage you, right? So I encourage you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you were called. Walk in a manner worthy of the calling for which you were called, right? Each one of us has a calling. Each one of us was called to do something here on the earth realm. And Paul is encouraging um, the people of Ephesus to walk in a way that is worthy of the calling that God has given you, right? We should not be taking our calling lightly. We should not um, take it as a joke, right? It is something that is serious. And it is our job as believers. It is our job as ambassadors of Christ to walk in a way that is worthy of the calling, right? When God gives you a calling, he is trusting you with something, right? He is trusting you because everything that God does here on earth, he does through us. He does through his people. And so when he gives you a calling, he is trusting you to do what you are supposed to do with that thing. And so Paul is saying here, walk worthy, live a life that is worthy of what God has trusted you with. Is the life that you're living a positive reflection of the calling that you have been given? Or is your witness or is your light or is your saltiness dimmed by the way that you are living, right? So in verse one, Paul immediately says, I encourage you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you were called. And you might say, okay, how do I do that, right? He says, with all humility, meekness and patience, bearing with one another in love. So how do you walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you are called? You do it with humility. You do it with meekness. You do it with patience, bearing with one another in love. Be eager to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. That is how you walk in a manner. That is how you live a life worthy of the calling which, which you have, with which you were called. And then he goes on to say in verse four, there is one body and one spirit, even as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all, right? So we serve one God. There is only one true faith, right? There is only one baptism and we are only one body, right? We are, and we'll talk about this later, but we are one body fitly joined together, right? And so he says that we should be bearing with one another in love and we should be eager to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And then verse seven says, but grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So because of the grace of Christ, we have all been given gifts. Verse 8 says, therefore, he says, when he ascended, he being Jesus Christ, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. So, and then verse 9 says, in saying he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also he who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. So Jesus Christ came to earth. He died on the cross for our sins. He redeemed us from death. And that's why it says he led captivity captive. So all that were captive, he led out of captivity, right? And then he gave gifts to men because Jesus Christ knew exactly what we would need. And so he left us with certain things to help us grow as a body because he could no longer be here with us anymore, right? And so verse 11 says, these are the gifts that he gave us. He gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Those are the gifts that he gave us. So when you are in church, when you are um, in your ministries, remember that these people that he has placed in these positions are gifts to us, that he has given us according to his grace. These people are gifts, your pastors, your teachers, evangelists. Um, apostles, prophets, these are all gifts that he gave. Here's um, why he gave them in verse 12, for the equipping of the saints. What does it mean to equip? It means to give somebody the tools. It means to give somebody the knowledge. It means to give somebody the resources that they need to do whatever it is that they are trying to do. So God gave us these gifts um, in these people, these teachers, these pastors, these prophets. He gave us them 
as a gift in order to equip us, in order to give us the tools, in order to give the res give us the resources, in order to give us the wisdom that we need to walk in this life, right? To do what it is that he has instructed us to do. So he gave them to us for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service, or for the work of the ministry, and for the building up of the body of Christ. That's what they were given um, to us for. And so when I read this scripture, two things come to mind. One, what I just said about us remembering that they are gifts, remembering what um, God has instructed them to do, right? And then the second thing is that we also, as a body, are required to hold each other accountable. And so God very clearly lays out what he has given us these people for, what he has given our pastors, what he has given our teachers, what he has given um, our prophets, our evangelists for. So because we are supposed to hold each other accountable, it is important that you look at these people who are in these positions and you ask yourself, especially those that you are serving under, you ask yourself, is my pastor um, equipping me? for the work of service, and for the building up of the body of Christ? Is my teacher doing the same thing? Are the people that I'm serving under equipping me for the, for ministry and for building up of the body? If they are not, then we have a problem, right? Because yes, it is important that we recognize them as gifts, but it's also important that we hold each other accountable to do what it is that God has called us to do in the positions that he has placed us in, right? So God gave us gifts. He gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service, and for the building up the, of the body of Christ until we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God into a complete man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So we may no longer be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the tricker, trickery of men, by craftiness with the deceitful scheming, right? So this is why he gave them to us so that we could be equipped for the work of ministry and for the building up of the body so that we could all come into unity of the faith and the knowledge of Jesus Christ so that we are not... um moved so that we are not um like it says uh tossed here and there by waves and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men right because there's always going to be something um that comes up against the word of jesus christ there's always going to be um a new ideology there's always going to be um a new way of thinking and uh, there's always going to be different religions and things like that but the reason why god gave us these gifts gifts um in these people was for the equipping so that we could learn so that we could be full of the knowledge and the faith in jesus christ so that when we do hear about these other things and so that we, when we hear about every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men that satan comes up with that we will not be tricked that we will not be tossed because we will be so full of the knowledge of jesus christ right so verse 15 says, but speaking the truth in love, we may grow up in all things into him who was the head, Christ himself, from whom the whole body, so from Christ himself, who was the head of the body, the whole body being each one of us in Jesus Christ is joined together and connected by every joint and ligament as every part effectively does its work and grows, building itself up in love. And this is why I stress the importance of identity. And I even have a free um, five-day email course on identity. Um, it's called Identity Discovery. So you can click the link um, in the description box for more information on that if you struggle with knowing um, your identity in Christ. But this is why it's so important for us to know our identity in Christ. Because when you know your identity, you know where you fit in the body, right? And so in that course, one of the things I talk about is when we don't know our, our identity, we fall victim to one of the identity thieves, which is comparison, right? So we compare ourselves, we compare our journey, we compare our calling, we compare our purpose to everyone else's, and we start to try to copy and do what other people are doing. But the problem with that is that we are a body. And so when you think about your body, we have two arms, right? And so we don't need four arms in the body of Christ. 
And so it's important that we are not just trying to get in where we fit in, but that we know who we are and what we were called to do so that we are in our right position because each part of the body is important for a specific function. Our eyes are important for a specific function. If our eyes, if the people who are the eyes in the body, right, are not in their right position, then that's a problem. If the legs are not in their right position, that's a problem. And so it's important that we not know our identity. It's important that we know who we are. It's important that we know what God has called us to do so that we can function in our right positions in the body of Christ, right? So it says, from whom the whole body is joined together and connected by every joint and ligament as every part effectively does its own work. Each one of us has a specific work that we need to do in order to move the whole body forward. And this is why a lot of times the body of Christ does not progress because we are so busy um, not doing what it is that God has called each one of us specifically to do. And so it's like we're struggling, we're fighting against ourselves internally when what we should be fighting about is external. We should be coming together to fight um externally the powers and principalities of this world but we're so busy fighting inside of the body because we don't know what we're doing we don't know where we fit in at right so it says from whom the whole body is joined together and connected by every joint and ligament as every part effectively does its work and grows building itself up in love Therefore, this I say and testify in the Lord, that from now on, you walk not as other Gentiles walk, so not as the Gentiles who are now unsaved walk, in the vanity of their minds, having their understanding darkened, excluded from the life of God through the ignorance of that is within them, due to the hardness of their hearts. Being callous, they have given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. But you did not learn about Christ in this manner, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off the former way of life in the old nature, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. So first, when we become saved, the first thing that we must do, because it says that you put off the former way of life in the old nature, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. And then secondly, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So your mind has to have a shift and that you put on the new nature, which was created according to God in righteousness and true holiness. And so when you think about your nature, think about it as clothing, right? When you used to be dirty, right? You wore dirty, your clothing became dirty, your nature became dirty as a result of who you are. So now that you have been renewed, now that you have been sanctified, now that you have been made clean, you cannot put on that old nature again. You cannot put on those dirty clothes. When you get out of the shower, you do not put on dirty clothes again, right? So this time, now that you are renewed, now that you have been made clean, now that you have been sanctified, now that you have been saved in Jesus Christ, you have to put on a new nature. You have to put on new, fresh clothing, right? According to God in righteousness and true holiness. So you might be asking, okay, so how do I do that? What is my new nature? What is it supposed to look like? And he says here in verse 25, therefore, putting away lying. So lying is a part of your old nature. Let every man speak truthfully with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. And I think this is so important because it's good to know that God gave us emotions. God gave us feelings for a reason. And so it's important to feel the feelings. You do not have to act like you're not upset. You do not have to act like you don't get angry sometimes. But the Bible says, be angry, feel those feelings, feel your emotions, but do not sin. So you can feel angry, you can feel upset, and you can acknowledge those emotions, but you also have to acknowledge the fact that there are certain things, actions that must not take place as a result of your feelings. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Do not give place to the devil. Let him who steals, steals no more. So stealing is a part of the old nature, right? So we can't steal anymore. Instead, so instead of stealing, let him labor, let him work with his hands, things which are good, that he may have something to share with him who is in need. Let no unwholesome word proceed out of your mouth, 
but only that which is good for building up that it may give grace to the listeners. So the only thing that proceeds out of your mouth is anything that is good for the building up of the body and that will give grace to those who are listening to you. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not make the Holy Spirit grieve. Do not make the Holy Spirit upset. Do not make the Holy Spirit saddened because you are not listening, because you are not following in its instructions, right? The Holy Spirit was given to us for a reason. And so when we don't um, listen to it, the Holy Spirit um, grieves. The Holy Spirit is upset. The Holy Spirit is saddened by the fact that we are not listening to it. In whom you are sealed. So you have been sealed um, in the Holy Spirit for the day of redemption. And then here we go. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, outbursts, and blasphemies with all malice be taken away from you. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ also forgave you. Right? So that is the end of chapter five. But here are a couple of points that I want you guys to remember. Number one, you have been called by God and it is now your responsibility to lead a life that is worthy of that calling, right? So how do you do that? You're always going to be humble and gentle. You need to be patient. You need to make every effort to be united in the spirit and the body of Christ. And you also need to be peaceful, right? The other thing um, that I want you to remember is that there is one body and one God, but he has given us all special gifts. Those gifts being the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers, right? And they're responsible for equipping us as God's people to do his work and building up the body of Christ. And they are to do this until everyone becomes unified and becomes mature, not lacking knowledge of Christ, right? The next thing that I believe is really important for us to remember is that we need to know our identity and who we are in Christ because although we are different, we are still a part of one body that God has fitly joined together. And this means that as each and one of us walk in our own purpose and in our own calling, that we help other people grow in doing the same thing. So your growth, your obedience, or your lack thereof affects the whole body, not just you, right? So when we all do our part, the whole body is healthy, growing, and full of love, right? And then the next thing that I want you guys to remember is that once you learn of Christ and once you become saved, you should immediately be throwing away the old you, right? Those, that old nature, the old clothes. You should be immediately throwing that away and the things you used to do and letting the spirit of God renew your thoughts in your mind. And then I just want us to pay attention to the end of this chapter because it is very specific about the things that we should and should not be doing. So it tells us to stop telling lies, stop letting our anger or our feelings make us sin, stop letting the sun go down when we're angry because we know that anger gives a foothold to the devil. Um, it tells us to quit stealing, instead use your hands for good works. And then it also tells us to get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, and harsh words, slander, and evil behavior. And lastly, it tells us to replace all of those things with kindness, mercy, forgiveness, remembering that God does the same for all of us. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will see you guys next week for another Faith Friday video. But until then, make sure you subscribe and turn on your post notifications so that you don't miss a video from me. And I will see you guys later. Bye.